All right, hey guys, we are here, Missouri. This is it, this is our uh, 2021 Missouri trip. And uh, just got camp set up, getting everything ready. We got uh, Joe's truck right here. We had to drive separate because we may, don't know if we're gonna stay the same equal amount of time, but we got Joe's truck there. Car here, all ready to go. Pack is in, bow's in, arrow case is there, stands down there on the bottom, jet sled in there if I need it. So we got everything basically all ready. Uh, wood, our shower, that jet sled is a dedicated shower sled. This is a pull deer out of the wood sled. That is a dedicated uh, for when we take our showers. We got all these, our jugs of water uh, for shower water, things like that. We got our wood. Put this jug over here just because that stake is not going in very far because of that tree root and I don't want somebody to trip on it. Wall tent set, wood stove because it's going to be cold. Joe's already in here trying to figure out where he wants to hunt in a little bit. And uh, he is taking my frame pack because he forgot his. So if he hopefully kills a deer, he's got a frame pack with him but this is a camp set up here joe's totes which is how he carries everything he doesn't believe in duffel bags so he's got to carry the totes and uh he's got his set up here wood stove normally we put wood in here but what we do is we go out here i got the splitting wall in the trailer we come back tonight we'll split three or four logs and then we'll carry those pieces that we're going to use in and stack them here for the night um if it was going to be raining it's not raining well i don't think there's any rain in the forecast this week but if there was rain we would take and stack all of that wood inside of here but right now it's nice because it gives us space to dry stuff I have all these hangers right here to dry clothes if we need them. Um, more hangers along here. Those hangers were one of the best things I ever bought. They don't make them anymore. Or I can't find them anyway. Uh, but these are absolutely incredible little aluminum hangers. I got them from Montana Tent back in the day about eight years ago. I, like I said, I don't think they make them anymore. And uh, disco bed cots, most comfortable cots ever. 360 heater just for in the mornings and for like right now we're going to be heading out here in just a little bit uh it's nine o'clock in the morning we just got here and got set up but we don't you know this is for nighttime when we're in here and we're set and then in the mornings when we get up this heats this tent incredibly well this thing cooks it in here it's amazing and uh but what's nice about having that is it's instantaneous where this takes a solid half hour to get hot and keep going so this is for nighttime this is for quick trips back for lunch if we come back and then also in the morning for getting ready. Uh, tables back there, put all our gear on, anything we need to. Uh, a couple of chairs if we want them. Honestly speaking, most likely these chairs will be folded up and shoved underneath here and not used. I don't think we use them very often. Maybe just to eat on. And uh, Joe's amazing charging system. It's got a deep cycle battery hooked up with a actual plug he wired it in and he's got it set up here with a usb charger charge all the stuff he needs on here everything's set there for him um but it's nice we can charge phones get everything together and uh beautiful setup little lantern right here best lanterns ever made the nembos um i think i've talked about these but they are dimmable and down and regular lantern mode these are the best ones i've ever found and uh just incredible little lanterns they work like a champ and uh that's camp setup my bag of clothes up there, a couple pairs of boots right down there. And uh, we are basically here and we are set and we are ready. And uh, now it's time to get changed, figure out where we're gonna hunt. That's what Joe's doing here. He's mapping, if you look closely on that map, you'll figure out where he's trying to hunt at if you ever wanna find a spot where you won't see any deer. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're gonna figure out where to hunt and we're gonna get out there and make it happen. We'll be back soon. Okay, day one, Missouri. And on stand, finally, I went into another spot, was planning on hunting. I'm kind of, again, going to places I've never been before. And uh, I went to go into a spot, and as I was just about to pick a tree, some guy started whistling at me. He came over, he said, hey, are you, where are you going to be at? Are you hunting right here? Because I had my stand on my back. And I said, I haven't decided yet. I'm just kind of scouting a little bit, looking for a place to set up. And uh, he said, well, okay, well, let me know where you want to be so I don't bugger you up. I, I'm going back there right now to get a stand that I hunted this morning. And then tonight I'm going down over here by the creek crawl. I'm thinking, yeah, you can go anywhere you want in here, bud. No worries. I'm, I'm bailing out. I'm not seeing anything I'm liking. And uh, it was a good area. I saw like eight scrapes in that area and three fresh rubs. But um, I'm not going in there with him in there. Maybe I'll check it again at the end of the week. He said they were leaving tomorrow. So we'll see. But so much pressure here. But anyway, so I got back in the car drove 30 minutes over to this spot that I'm in here which was where I was originally gonna go but thought I'd save it till tomorrow um, but uh, but we're in it now and we are set up we're gonna be here uh, for the next seven hours till dark and then tomorrow do something totally different but what we have my wind 
it's blowing right down there okay the hill goes way down that channel down that draw and my wind is going straight down there and i'm hoping that that wind holds true to right there and i'm hoping that all this terrain funnels it right down through there i'm expecting those deer to come out of bedding there and work this hillside and cut down over here okay it's pretty open up there on the top over there it crests over and it's a uh, low cut uh crp kind of field but it's cut low so it's not somewhere they want to be so they're going to use this hillside to come down this way or they're going to which i have a lot of trails that i can see to come off that hill hit these ridges these fingers and come up through these fingers to go to there i'm expecting all travel around me to somehow either filter to go up to there filter through to go up to here or to cross right in here that draw where you can't see it but right on the other side of this that is nasty choked full of deadfalls and blowdowns right right in there is just horrible and it's almost a sheer drop and it is choked out so they won't cross in there so they'll if they want to travel and cross through here which the trails here show me um, they will cross right here. They'll use this spot here or they'll go all the way to the top. All the way to the top is not something that I want to be at right now. All of these ridges and these fingers meet together right where I am. Now this is very open, but I'm expecting them to use all these pieces of cover. The whole place is open. They've cut this, but you can see all the little thick gray stuff right here. So I'm expecting this travel to be just on this side working right through there giving me shooting into there coming up over the top from there and crossing through to get up to there um there's some high hopes now i've already seen one deer um actually two maybe the same one twice but when i was coming in i came in from straight down his finger knowing where i wanted to be on a map and uh, i was standing right by that little oak behind this one right there was getting ready to think about setting up in there because of all the sign it was crossing over here and there was a deer over there i see him shaking it's been raining this morning it was raining so i see him shaking and i stopped and waited for a minute and i didn't see him anymore i said okay and uh i came over here i was halfway up the tree and i watched a deer there that was downwind it had came up and crossed and went up that way and a little buck, I don't know how big he was, not very big, but cruising through and checking that. So um, I'm hoping that I'm in the right spot. I can't go down there. If I go down there, I'm busted. That's all. That's where wind, my wind is going to. So I'm hoping that I may not see any does. I mean, I'm not hoping I don't, but I may not. But I'm hoping any cruising bucks that are checking and sending doe bedding areas will filter through this area based on the terrain that's my goal so uh we will see um i was hoping it'd be a lot more uh tighter a lot thicker in here but um you know they use the hills and the thermals but uh, you can see that they cut all this last year that's part of this plan they do where they cut out all the crap trees so that the um, good trees can you know can grow so you can see they cut this to shreds um, You can see all the new growth starting to come in But uh, they shredded it in here, but I am in a spot that I think is Very highly overlooked in a tremendously pressured area Very highly overlooked. I don't think people come into here. I've not seen any evidence of a person in here So I got high hopes. We'll see what happens. I'll keep you posted We got a doe right down there eating. You can see her right through there. Um, let me see where she is. Right there. Let's see if I can focus lock on her. Little doe down there eating. Just need him to come over here. It's hard to sit here where I'm at in this spot. That's the second deer we seen. We saw the one back there, over there when I got up. We just saw that doe right over there, and uh, you know, just just over this hill right here. And uh, it's so open right here that it's it's really hard for me to convince myself to stay here. 
but this is where I feel that the deer bucks that are cruising are going to be. That wind is coming this way. They will work this bowl right around here. They can either go all the way to the top, which like I said, I don't want to be at um, up there. I'm about, I don't know, third or halfway down. It goes way down there. I know being down way in the bottom is bad because the wind is just a bowl down there and circulates. I'm already almost too far down here as it is but the wind is good for me and uh the other thing we got to take into consideration too is the cuts that go up through here the that that one right there is so nasty and so straight wall deep that i got a feeling like the sign shows me that they will cross it down here and uh and then I have all these cross trails that come right on the edge of this stuff, right up and over this hill, right from where that doe was. So, I, I, I'm, it's a tough call, but I honestly believe this is where I need to be in order to make it happen, but it is tough. I do not like being in this area that is so open. It is, it is too, you know, it's too open, but I'm surrounded by this thick stuff, so... And the terrain tells me this is where the deer will move through. The sign tells me that deer are moving through here. So everything tells me that I am where I need to be, even though I don't like the way it feels. So we're going to stick it out. She is still right there. She just eating on those greens right there about, I don't know, maybe 80, 85 yards away. You can see her there. Sorry, I don't want to lock. I'm trying to not focus on that tree, but... Yeah, she's 80, 85, 90 yards from me. But if she comes over here, she's getting an arrow. Exactly what I thought he would do coming right up this ridge. We got that six point up there on that ridge. And look at this little three point right here coming up to me.
my bunk deck still to fill. That bump right there. Bye night. But it's only the first morning for me in a new spot I've never been in. I came in here blind. I'm not shooting at deer too little, too early. first spot on the first day I was getting ready to hang a stand and this guy came up to me hey where are you gonna be at out and I remember I walked out of there and said I don't want to be there and I left um, ran into one of them guys yesterday afternoon I was up on the road making phone calls and he came by talked to him for a minute and I uh, told him where I was going to I went over there and uh, I set up and got in there. Well, come to find out when I left, their truck was parked right next to mine and they were hunting right over where I was. And, uh, but there's so many people here, so many. We've been coming here for many years, you know, 10 years here in this area. And every year it gets worse and worse. Um, yesterday, cause I bought a new car and I had to order it. I was just driving around while I was going over the application stuff and all the details and uh, everything like that for the order. And, sorry, looking who that is. And uh, anyway, 41 trucks, 41 trucks on 8,000 acres. And out of that 8,000 acres, 3,500 of it, almost half is not really huntable. 
um, because it's basically just, you know, 10 foot tall grasses with no trees in there, nothing. I mean, you can hunt the skirts of it, which people do, but I mean, but they're huge areas. So you got a, you know, you're basically 5,000 acres and uh, tremendous, like 80, 80 hunters, if you figure two people per truck, about, you know, somewhere between 70 and 80 different hunters running around here on 5,000 acres. And here is mobile hunting only. Okay, um, says it at every parking lot, portable tree stands only. And uh, so everybody in there, I did not see one person from Missouri. Everybody is from Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Virginia. They're all coming from different places to hunt here. Saw two from Iowa. Um, and, uh, you know, it's all a lot of staters that are mobile hunters, run and gun. So they're covering a tremendous amount of ground like we do. And this place is just tore up. Um, so I didn't see nothing yesterday, but I had an idea last night while I was sitting there in my in my cot looking for where I wanted to go, and uh, I thought I'd try it today. Tactic I use at home a lot. It's worked well so far, but what I did here yesterday, I was 900 yards along that over to the next ridge and dropped down and way down that ridge, down that finger. Well, on my way out, when I got right there, I jumped a four point that was bedded right there. I came up further, right here. I jumped three does that were bedded right there. This is another ridge, there's a ridge that comes there and then this is a finger and it crosses over and the ridge extends, I'll show you. The ridge wraps around that way. But they were, so this is a crossover. They were bedded right on that crossover. Well, the parking lot is, I'm gonna hit end, end that call, there we go. My car is right there. That's my Cherokee Trailhawk sitting right there. And that gray is the parking lot. There's a camper right there. A guy got back there at about 9 this morning. He's been out there chopping wood and making a fire and making all kinds of racket. Um, but I figure there's a reason I'm here. With so many hunters that are covering so much ground and they're all going to go way down into this stuff, okay? They're going down into the bottoms and halfway down in the bottoms and they're walking down there scouting. Given the fact that I saw deer bedded here, I thought, I wonder if the safest place for those deer to be are right here next to the road, the ridge that runs the road. I mean, look at how tight that ridge is right there, and all that sign goes right by that log right there, right below my car. That truck, or that car for me right now is 84 yards. You know, on my GPS or on my Onyx, it's 84 yards from here to my car. And, uh, but it's hard to see from ground level. I'm 18 feet up in a tree, but from ground level, you got pretty, they got pretty good cover here, and they can hop that and go right through there. But I think they're using this area because it is a zone where no hunter would think of being. No hunter would set up right here that guy's up there making noise and uh, nobody would be here but the hunters are all down here in this stuff and if they want to travel through there they got to deal with the hunters up here by the road they don't have to deal with the hunters and it's kind of a secure place um that's my anticipator that's my thoughts you know, any deer that are traveling these ridges are going to cross a couple of footsteps from people coming down, but they're not encountering trees with scent all around them in places where people have been. They're not getting scent or winding hunters every hundred yards that there is along here. So I'm assuming this is kind of a safe travel zone. Well, it's worked out pretty good for me so far. I mean, it's so far this morning. I mean, I just came in here and did this this morning. Um, I had one doe come right off that hillside and cross up right there, come right in, get right here, never giving me a shot yet where she was broadside, but standing right there, ended up catching my wind and then blew and ran down that thing. So my wind is going down here. I figured the travel would be up here. And then I had two more does come right up on a straight up over there, come up, wiggle right up around here, come down, come straight down here to me. You can still see their marks on the ground right here, right there and right there. But they stood right here and right there, looked around for a minute, must have caught my wind. And then they poof, one shot right down there and just bailed out of here. So they never gave me a shot. I was hoping, but they were right there. And then I had a, uh, 
a Kai or a, a domestic dog first, which I showed you a video, but that domestic dog, he's been running deer or something over there, but uh, he's been running down that ridge, going over there, black and white dog and a brown one, and he comes back up and he goes over there, lives in a house that's, you know, way over there at the end of the property, you know, on private land. And then I had a coyote go right through here and work right up along there. So, so far, I mean, it's only 10 a.m. right now, and it's been a pretty decent spot. I really can't complain too much about it. So this tactic's got some potential. I might try it again, because like I said, we're so overrun with people. And mobile hunter people, not ladder stand guys that are sitting in a ladder in one spot the whole week. Like you encounter in Kansas and Ohio and stuff like that. This year, this is mobile hunters everywhere. We talked to that guy yesterday. He said he covered, he showed me his thing on Onyx. He covered 6.7 miles of scouting. Um, the other day that was down here, they went 6.7 miles of scouting through here. Keep in mind, it's only 5,000 acres of really huntable area. He went 6.7 miles through that. That's just one guy. And there's 70 something guys here hunting. So it just goes to show you. Um, in a nutshell, we won't come back here again. Like I said, it's been 10 years. Started out great. Every year gets worse and worse. This parking lot, tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow, I'll come by here and show you probably, but there'll be, there'll be 15 campers in this parking lot Friday. And uh, for this whole next week, it's pretty crazy here. So we're not coming back here again. We may not even come to Missouri again. Place is just overrun. It's just, you know, the public land thing. I guess I got a lot to blame on that too for all the YouTube promotion of it I do and stuff like that too. But public land, there's just not enough public land for the amount of hunters ever since COVID. You know, so many people got into this sport and they're not going away. And it's just overrun with people everywhere. So we're going to have to find a different state or a different place. And, uh, but anyway, this tactic so far has been working. We're going to sit here till about noon and uh, see if the other two people that have campers up there come in. And then I'm going to move and figure out what to do for the afternoon. But this morning, pure success. You know, that system worked. There he is. You can see him up there walking around. Um, but, uh, so I'm not far from there. Hopefully a buck comes through here to check and see if there's anything bedded in here. Those two does, like I said, right there. I mean, I had them right here and I would have killed them in a heartbeat had they not been straight on to me and then blew right out of here. Same with that one there. I killed him too. So, you know, so the morning has been a success, a complete success for what I expected. Um, and uh, it proved to me that this tactic works and there's a good possibility I might do this tactic a couple more times while I'm still here a few days to go but I put my wind down here in this nasty crap that I don't want to I don't expect deer to be in down there unless it's an escape route like these ones went through but they went right down right through there on the finger but you can see these nasty draws and I'm expecting deer to not use those but listen up there on the road listen to all these people driving I mean there are hunters everywhere there's another car going by right now up there, see it behind my car. I mean, why are these guys not in the woods? Is Teddy, oh, he's actually pulling in here. Oh, here comes another one. I mean, you have no idea how crazy busy it is. But, like I said, this tactic of... See, he's at that same place with those two campers that are there. It is 10 a.m. How are you back here at 10 a.m. during the run? What are you thinking? But anyway... Like I said, high hopes that this tactic is going to pay off. I'm going to give it a, another two hours and see what happens. And then I'm going to bail out and move to somewhere different. All right, hey guys, it's uh, Friday afternoon. And uh, we started hunting here on Monday uh, late mornings when we got here. So whatever, how many days that is. Uh, last night uh, was kind of quiet. Didn't see too much of anything until right at dark. Right at dark, I had two deer, two deer move by, but they were, it was after legal shooting light, which seems to be the case here that I've been seeing a lot at night. They're not really moving until after legal light. Rut hasn't really kicked in anywhere that I've been sitting yet, other than at 10 point uh, that was, you know, basically holding that doe together. You know, he wouldn't leave her side. Um, I have seen a couple other deer, though. It's been really good. I've only had one sit where I didn't see deer. Poor Joe, 
Um, Joe usually is the first one to tag out. He has not seen a deer yet this week on stand. It's been tough for him. He's going to a lot of his old spots though, and hoping they produce. I'm actually not yet once hunted a spot that I've been before. I'm constantly moving. Like I told you guys, I do in other videos. Everything is a complete new set. Now this morning, I was about 250 yards over there and uh, hoping to catch a crossover connector a couple fingers with this ridge and the wind coming this way for leeward side and I had a massive eight point come over at 941 this morning come over that cut but instead of going to where I was he cut 35 yards short of me he was about 30 35 yards away from me and he came right down through here and I was like you know what they're running this side and then so I got down just came over here looked and noticed too that we got this wash it's a nasty gnarly dude we got this military crest that drops right here down here and then that big creek bottom there and you got yet this real subtle finger right here that comes up and down off of there and then you got this the side hill that military crest right down over to there and then they'll also come right you know they'll come up with this if they want to go up and over to one of the connector ridges well, there's a lot going on here and i have the leeward side of this ridge which is not very huge that that's not the bottom down there that's that's just a, a wash keeps going down further but this whole section just has a lot to offer right here and uh and like i said seeing that huge shooter eight that's pretty good so between that between that eight point, not even counting the little ones, all the, the, the tons of sixes and fours and threes and spikes uh, that I've that I've seen, but the uh, that's two huge shooter eights and a massive ten point um, that I've seen so far that have all been well. That one there wasn't in range, yeah, so they were all pretty right, you know, inside of thirty-ish yards, thirty-five with this one being a little further, but they were all right there. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good, and a lot, a lot of, a lot of opportunity. Just uh, nothing for me to let go of the string yet on, but uh, feeling good. I'm up here tucked in this little bitty. Look how little this oak is. Okay, look at this compared to my hand. I mean, that's teeny. This little uh, white oak I'm in here, but look at the bushing around me from its branches. I am in a nest right here just tucked in i got this other one right here i mean i am buried in here nothing's ever gonna know i'm here i got this cover right above me i am just tucked in to this little nest at about i'm um, probably from the ground i'm gonna say i'm probably 16 feet so not super high downhill shooting there uphill shooting here i got lots of shooting all the way around me it's a nice thing about being in little diameter trees you can lean and shoot all the way around the whole tree the bigger the diameter of the tree gets the harder it is to get your bow tip upper or lower to clear that tree skinny trees let you reach right around and shoot 360 without even having to move your feet you can just lean and tuck right around so it's a beautiful thing so all right we're gonna see what happens tonight see how it goes So it's almost 1.30 on Saturday and uh, got my butt kicked this morning. I'm in that same spot I was at last night. I thought for sure hoping that big eight point would come back through here since he did yesterday. He never did. I never saw another deer except for a four point, which I showed you on video. That was right down there and that's exactly where my wind was going. As soon as he hit my wind, we watched him take off out of there. And uh, so many people so many people here i mean it's unbelievable matter of fact i'll insert a picture somewhere right about here for you of a note joe just got out of stand he's leaving today and uh right after this morning hunt but he got out of stand about a half hour ago and got to his truck and this note was on his car or on his truck sitting there waiting for him when he can you know like i said i've never I, you you can't believe this i i um there's so many people here 
we won't be coming back. So many people. And the deer are just showing it. I mean, it, we should have deer cruising. I mean, I've been coming here for many, many years. And uh, by now, I should have seen six or eight different bucks running through here. Um, Joe's usually the first one to tag out. Joe spent Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He spent six days all almost all day sits but six days you know move to a different spot but he's been in the woods for six straight days and not seen a single deer here um pressure like now fortunately i've been pretty lucky i've only had two sits where i haven't seen deer both of them were evenings i haven't had a morning where i haven't been into deer um and uh i've only seen two midday but um like i said but point being yeah what a what a this is this has turned into a, a joke, kind of a, a bummer. Um, I saw a conservation officer yesterday. Was out there by my check or by my uh, my car, and uh, he saw me walk up. He said, "Wow, a longbow!" He said, "Man, there's hundreds of people out here hunting, and you're the first one I've seen with a longbow." Go figure. Um, but anyway, so this day's done. I got. To, I think I'm bailing after tomorrow. I'm gonna hunt tonight. Hunt tomorrow morning, then I'm gonna bail. I think I'm I'm about done with it. Like I said, it's it's wore out its welcome for me, and uh, time to move on to greener pastures. Good, you know, good area, lots of potential, just way overrun um, with people. So, all right, I'm gonna get down right now and move on to this afternoon. All right, here we go. This is officially my last tree stand. I will hang in this area of Missouri, maybe even in Missouri, but in this area of Missouri uh, for many years at least. You know, five, six, seven years, maybe we'll try it again. That's going to be a long time. I'm going to hunt it tonight. Um, took me a long time to figure out where it's being my last stand. I wanted perfection. I wanted to cheat. I wanted to break all the rules. And I wanted to see if it would work. And I did it. And I'm a long way in here. It is Michigan time, 4.30, so it's 3.30, so I got three hours left of daylight tonight. I've been up here for about maybe 35, 40 minutes, and I've seen one deer already. I'll show you where in a second, And uh, um, but I'm going to hunt this again in the morning. I'm going to leave this stand hung, and I'm going to come back and hunt it in the morning, and after I hunt in the morning, I'm bailing and heading back home. Um, so what we got here is a huge point. Sorry about sun. Huge point that comes down here. Valley there. Huge point there that comes down. This trough or bedding area right in here is just super nasty. That's where that doe came out of. I was just hanging my stand and that doe popped right out. Actually, went right here and then shot straight across there. Should have bedded in there. And we got this finger, this ridge that comes down here creek bottom that runs through here another finger that comes down here another finger and ridge that comes down here and this is a swampy creek bottom bedding area there hillside there private over there huge hillside there and private over there so we are kind of uh, where everything converges and deer can come from any direction kind of what I would call a hub uh, wind can be very finicky in here, and I make no promises, but I just, it feels right. Feels like where I want to be. So this is where I am basically making my last stand. I even put it in on X as my last stand. And, uh, we will, we're tight in this oak tree here. And, uh, we're gonna hunt it and see what happens tonight, see what happens tomorrow, and then put Missouri in the rear view. So we will keep you posted. As far as the break in the rules, technically I should be up high, up higher on the ridges, and not in the bottom. I should be on the leeward side. I should be where those bucks are cruising as they send check those that are coming up and down fingers and all that kind of stuff. But that's what everybody here is doing. It's what, where everybody is. They're all up there. So my hope, even though I'm in a whirlpool of wind, not necessarily good, but I'm hoping somewhere that some of these deer 
just start working in this lower area. I'm not expecting them to be directly down in the bottom. If they're bedding down there, that's fine, but my wind is going bouncing and moving, and yeah, it's getting there. I'm not too concerned about tonight. You don't see deer until after dark anyway this week. We haven't um, in the evening. But tomorrow morning, deer that are coming into this bedding area or that bedding area or bucks that want to scent check those, I have a feeling are going to do it down here low where people are not rather than being up high in the ridges where people are going to be up there. They're going to want to stay down here even if they got a hopscotch and wiggle and wobble and move through here. They, they're going to want to be down here. That's my intention. There's no people down here trying to pull a deer up out of here. Absolute nightmare. I mean, even to get up these some of these ridges, you got to basically claw with your hands and your knees. And uh, people aren't going to want to pull deer out of here. I don't see any activity of people down here. So we're going to give it a whirl and see what happens. Let's see. Okay, camp is winding down here. Uh, Joel was sleeping right here, left uh, after this morning hunt. And uh, I'm going to be leaving tomorrow, so I got a lot of this stuff done. You can see the guy lines here. I left uh, the corner ones and one in the middle out there, but I pulled all the other ones. I'm just trying to get stuff as ready as I can. Uh, his cot's all packed up. I just have my cot right there. And uh, disco bed cots, absolutely amazing. Sleeping bag, I'm all set and ready. And uh, my little blanket that I use for if I got to sleep in the back of the Cherokee on the way home, which this will be the last time I can do that because I actually just bought a Tacoma, so I won't be able to curl up in the back of an SUV anymore, which I will severely miss. Um, pads, which are nice, so when I want to get, out, you know, when I have my shoes off, I can step on those, like when I just got out of the shower set up. Okay, got a jet sled right here. You can still see the water in there. Solar shower hanging right here. Just like that, I got a cooker right over here. So a propane one that I actually will be making my dinner on here for macaroni and cheese in a little bit. But I heat up two of these kettles of water. And actually what I do is I pour one kettle of cold water and one kettle of hot water into that bag. And uh, that's my shower setup. My 360 propane heater, I put the stove away already. The stove was there, we've been using it. Uh, but I closed that off and put that away so it was packed up and out of here. And uh, But like when I take a shower, I just take this one pad and I set it right there. Now I can get out of the shower, go from there to here where I have all my clean clothes laid out and everything like that that I'm already wearing. Dirty clothes go in a laundry bag. This is my dinner right here, Doritos, Velveeta cheese, cup of waters, and a treat of a pop later on. And uh, that's the setup there. So this is basically uh, camp. You know, this is it in a nutshell here. A little chair to sit in. and uh, But Stan's already out. Everything's all set. My lantern up here. These are the best lanterns in the world. If you don't already have one of these, best lantern ever. These are the poppies. Okay. Um, they're uh, Nem or Nebo. I'll put a link to them. Nebo poppies. These things are incredible because they work as the actual light. 
on the bottom and watch it is dimmable. You press and hold, see it dimming down lower and lower and lower. Okay, so it's dimmable that way on and off. You can take the handle and rotate the handle from a up position like this by flipping it to that one and have it in a carry like this kind of handle on a top configuration. And uh, But these things are awesome. It's just a great lantern, simple and easy. And uh, like I said, I love the dimmability of this so I can tone that way down and make it nice and uh, romantic light if I want. So you can, you know... The camera keeps adjusting with it, but uh, it does give you that option to tone it down real well and just hang it right up here. I'm a short guy, so I use two carabiners and just put it right there like that. Lights up the whole tent real nice. And uh, that's it. So we got one, uh, one more hunt left in the morning. I'm going to make my macaroni and cheese, sit there and relax a little bit, answer some comments and some uh, Facebook and Instagram. I spend about an uh, hour and a half, two hours a night doing that kind of stuff so i'm going to do that a little bit then i'm going to get myself to uh get some sleep and be ready for tomorrow's hunt so there you go just had a buck trying to come down right down here got right there just crossed the creek bed was standing right there staring around sniffing the air must have got my wind and then went right back up i don't know how big he was he was in his brush but a nice buck that i shot this is a this is a high risk situation right now until the sun comes up. I feel like I'm the last Fruit Loop in a half eaten bowl of cereal with my wind just doing this down here right now. And uh, I mean I'm in here for a reason. I know it's risky, but once that sun comes up over here and starts to heat this up, I'm expecting my thermals to start rising this way. That's why I'm up this hill a little bit. I have two bedding areas. One right there where we saw that big buck at yesterday. And then we have one right here. This whole creek bottom over here is a tangled mess. And that's where those five does came out last night. You're right at dark. They came down. See these two? Um, oh, too far. Right here they crossed. Right here. Went down. And then crossed over. Right down there and hopped across and I almost shot that last one right where am I pointing right here I'll show you and I honestly the reason I didn't shoot her was because it was getting so it wasn't dark yet it was still legal light but it was so low light that I couldn't tell if there was any brush there and right here is where she was standing and let it refocus. Look at the stuff that's right there. Those couple of branches in there. I don't know if I would have got a deflection or not. That's, uh, like I said, she was right there, right between those two trees. Makes me a little on a nervous side. Um, so I didn't shoot. And then I could have shot down here, too, when they were right here. But again, look at that stuff right there that I, I wasn't able to see last night. Right here, all this stuff here. Now I know I can shoot there, but there I don't know if I could have. Um, like I said, a lot of variables when it, when it's low light that you can't see. And uh, so I chose to not shoot at any of them. And uh, but we'll see. we got a lot of morning left, but that sun should start peeking over the top here pretty soon. And heating things up and getting us, uh, you know, my thermals going up. Prevailing winds going down perfect wind tunnel. I'm set in the right spot. I'm in between two bedding areas and I'm in an area that seems to have a lot of deer activity during daytime. So it's a win-win. We'll see what happens. This is not looking real good here. It's getting pretty windy out and that wind is just going everywhere down here. As a matter of fact, I think I've seen my same piece of milkweed come by me four times already. Like go, be gone for 15 minutes and it comes back around. I mean, it's uh. It's, this is not a good place to be with the wind. I haven't seen nothing since that buck that was over there this morning. We got about an hour left, and uh, then we're going to pack up and bail out of here. But uh, this wind, like I said, is uh, giving me some fits down here for sure. To be expected, but I had hopes that I could, uh, you know, just edge it or beat it somehow. But one hour to go, we'll see. All right, we are working our way out of here. We are done. Missouri's over. We we're way down there and we gotta go straight up there for a long way 
And, uh, you know, I gave up a desk job about 30 years ago because of my uh, love for chocolate milk and donuts. And the fact that sitting behind a desk all day was impeding my ability to eat chocolate milk and donuts and uh, keep me in shape. So I picked jobs that would let me be much more active and let me eat donuts and drink chocolate milk and still maintain this perfect flawless figure. And I'm telling you, man, these hills where they are, whew, they take it right out of you. I'm going to have to start eating more vegetables and salads and all that kind of crap again. And I'm not looking forward to it. But we are hiking our way out of here, <clears throat> putting Missouri in the rear view. i got to go back and uh, break down camp. And you can see what a mess this stuff is here. I mean, it's not only is it straight uphill, it's blowdowns everywhere that you got to navigate through and probably best bet side hill in it a little bit here but yeah it's just a nightmare in here with all this cutting they did a deer love it but god is brutal to walk through especially uphill especially only being five foot six which means my legs are like 13 inches long so this is an adventure so we're gonna make our way up here and get out of here and then we're gonna go to camp and get everything broke down.
All right, that does it. We are heading out. We are out of Missouri. Well, we're not out of Missouri yet, but we're about an hour away from where I'm, I was hunting at. And I thought I'd just uh, tell you a little bit, of, talk for a second here and show you some of the pretty country here. But um, yeah, so, and you might even hear my trailer squeaking back there. I mean, all the dust and everything, my hitch is, that adjustable hitch is creaking like crazy right now until it gets settled in. But uh, um, anyway, beautiful, beautiful place, beautiful place. Um, I did not see another deer other than that buck this morning and I uh, had a great trip I was here for seven days and uh, just seeing so many people and I talked to a lot of people too I talked to personally like talked to about 20 people there were like six that knew who I was um, and I uh, talked to a few people that were in some of the bigger groups that were there too and uh, as far as my knowledge um, in this last week there were only two bucks that were killed two bucks and one doe uh, that were killed and uh, one was a smaller buck and uh, he was like a six or seven small one and uh, the other guy killed a pretty decent eight point uh, both compound shooters but of seven 75 or so guys that were here that's the only ones that I heard of actually killing deer um, I had a, you know it's been phenomenal for me I, I, my trip was incredible I had uh, 15 sits on stand and of those 15 sits I uh, um, I only had two sits where I did not see deer otherwise I was into deer every single time I passed on a bunch of does I passed on a bunch of smaller bucks the, you saw them on video the spikes the twos the three or spikes the uh, three points two three points the six a couple of six points actually and uh, I the only regret is I probably should have shot that eight point it was at like 23 yards 22 23 24 yards um, I just didn't feel confident especially with it being downhill I, these uh, you know when you're hunting in ridge a downhill side just doesn't feel very um, I don't know just it's it's tough sometimes when they're 40 feet below you so I but that's the only regret I got is I maybe should have shot uh, that deer and then the other one would be uh, those does last night I probably but I'm glad I didn't you know it didn't feel right but they were in range so um, going home empty-handed but I did see a tremendous amount of deer in a place that was way over hunted with way too many people on it and I feel really good about that it just goes to show that my my skill set for public land hunting and dealing with pressure is is still there same with how it's been in michigan i have even though i only have one deer in the freezer so far this year where normally by now i'd have two or three or four um it has been one of the absolute best seasons that i've ever had i mean i have been into deer every single time never hunting the same place twice with the exception of uh one evening and then a morning here in missouri um but other than that it's it's constantly moving going into new places i've never been and um i've been having a time of my life this is like i said been one of the best seasons so far now I still got Kansas I still got a little bit of time in Michigan very little and then it's off to uh um, head to uh, Georgia for pig hunting and stuff like that down there but um, I cannot complain not even a little bit about this trip but that said poor Joe who is one of the best hunters I know um, he never even seen a deer in, si in six days he never saw a deer on stand one time and uh, you know it just goes to show that the tactics that we normally use um, don't work your tactics that you want to use here you, your rut tactics they don't work uh, you know get get downwind of a bedding area yeah that works in most places do that here and you're gonna be staring at nothing I know because Joe's been doing it he's been doing every tactic that is written in a book or mentioned or talked about or anything like that he has been doing it um, I tried to convince him otherwise a couple of times a few times he listened to me but then he got bored didn't feel confident and he left early um, you know so there's a lot of uh, stuff here that can be um you know that that can be whatever it is i guess but we won't be coming back here uh we'll be moving on to greener pastures and i you know i never have ever told anybody where i am um you know three people told me when i said man there's so many people three people said uh it's all the youtubers i'm thinking to myself i i don't know if they know who i am and they said because they weren't one of the ones that said so and they were being you know saying that as derogatory or sarcastic towards me or just saying it in general but i have never told anybody where i hunt 
Never once. And I've had so many people ask. Um, so many people, you know, and even when they say, hey, I saw you in Missouri at such and such, I tell them, I'm deleting your post immediately. I don't want people to know. So I've dried real hard. Well, I'm going to uh, never tell anybody ever where I'm going hunting and even the state I'm going to. So we're going to go somewhere different next year. And for all practical purposes, that's Hawaii or Canada or Los Angeles, California. That's where we're going to go hunt deer at. Because um, I'm just not telling anybody. Um, you know, like I said, it's the, the public lands are just overrun with people, especially in these kind of destination states. Of all the people I saw there, the only Missouri license plate was on a conservation officer's truck. Everything else was out of state people that were coming here to hunt like we're doing. And I'm not faulting anybody for that. I'm just saying we are getting to a point where public land hunting is way too big way too popular mobile hunting is way too big and way too popular and there's not enough lands to support it so i'm gonna have to get creative in where i go next uh we've been here like i said almost 15 years or something we've been in this area and it's you know the last six have been horrible with the amount of people so it would be good i don't want to shine this camera in people's faces here as i'm driving um make them wonder what i'm doing so we're gonna look at that pretty house over there there we go um so i i don't know uh, where I'm going or what the plan is, but we are going to relocate. I will. I got all summer to figure that out, but this summer um, I will figure out what state, what area, maybe even still in Missouri, maybe a different place. I, I don't know. I love Missouri. I love hunting here. I love the people here. I love everything about everything, single thing that there is. I just wish there was you know, more land available for people to enjoy hunting this way. And there's just not, there's way too many people in it. A few years from now, that may very well thin out. Okay, people might get frustrated like Joe did. Joe left early. He's like, I'm, I'm fed up, dude. I'm done. This, I can go home and sit in places where I actually understand and know what the deer are going to move and how they're going to use it and go sit in the rut at home and have good luck hunting there. I've been here six days. I've not seen a deer. No tactics. It should work. Work. These deer have disappeared. They're hiding in places that are untouchable. And he's not lying. I mean, I had to break so many rules this week to get into deer. I mean, I broke so many rules um to to make it happen if not rules like as in laws but i mean rules of what you should or how you shouldn't hunt or what you're taught or what i teach or the methods i mean i had to go way outside the box to be able and, and in some of these places i set up in i was like i cannot believe i'm actually going to climb this tree right here i mean i cannot believe i am going to do this and it panned out for me and it worked uh because the pressure was so high that your normal stuff that you would normally do was blown completely out of the water and not really of any value um so it's one of those kind of deals um so just a side thought for you you know don't be afraid to think outside of the box and um do some research before you dive into a place i, I talked to so many people here that said the same thing they're like yeah i'll never come back here talk to a guy from minnesota that came down here because their gun season's going on and he came down here to get away and do a little hunting and uh he was both compound and he had a recurve and uh he was like i'm gonna kill a big one with my compound and then i want to you know use a recurve and he just just got there that day he's like where man there's so many people i'm like yeah you picked the wrong place to go um i told him some other ones in the area that we've been to that have been pretty good that might be better for him um and showed him some stuff on a map and then told him i said hey if you're gonna stay here here's some of the places to go and some of the things to do and tactics to use um and hopefully he's hopefully it's working out good for him so i don't know but anyway that is going to wrap up this year's missouri vlog and i hope you enjoyed it and uh next year there will be another one coming from los angeles california uh or hawaii or uh canada or wherever else it is that we pick to hunt deer at but uh if i tell you it's in a state if i say it's in uh for example if i say i'm in michigan you can pretty much rest assured that i'm not going to be in michigan I'm just not letting that information out no more at all, not even saying the state. So thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.